Hello everyone, happy holidays. Welcome to a very special holiday edition of Andy's Travel Blog 2017 What's in My Camera Bag video. I'm gonna tell you about the camera gear that I'm using at the moment. Now bear in mind my camera equipment does kind of change over the years, but I have a pretty solid kit right now and it doesn't really have any holes. Now, just as a warning to you, a lot of this stuff is expensive, so I'm not saying you need all of this for right now, I'm just saying I have it, and to be honest, it's probably too much for me. But, but it's okay, because you know it works for me and you'll find something that works for you too. So if you're looking for like an epic travel video of me, like throwing this camera off the top of Mount Everest or something like that, then, well, let's be honest, you're probably at the wrong channel anyway, based on how many people have actually watched the travel videos I've put together. So. If you want to give me a holiday gift and don't feel like sending me any Bitcoin, go watch some of my other videos, leave a comment, like, whatever. So anyways, let's get right to it. Now the first part of what's in my bag is talking about the bags I use. So first off, we have the Peak Design Messenger Bag. So I like this thing when I'm doing on location shoots, if I'm shooting sports or something like that. Uh, this is a, it's a pretty well sized bag. And the, the thing you'll always have about these Peak Design bags, they're kind of expensive, but they're worth it. So not only does it have a pretty good locking mechanism here, it has a lot of space on the inside, and you have these little separators right here, which you can fold in and out. You can customize how they're laid out. So all you need to do is unvelcro it from here, and then Velcro it over here, and then all of a sudden you have a little separator uh, on this side. So, it gives you a lot of customization uh, on how you would like to carry this. So you can end up carrying, you know, I can carry two camera bodies and three lenses in this little bag right here. And it's nice because you can just throw it off your shoulder or throw it over your shoulder and go. And because they're peak design, everything's really well engineered. So there's a lot of pockets, a lot of extra areas. Some, a, a little touch that I love is if you look here on these little pockets, you'll see you have uh, red, uh, stitching and green stitching. So for me, I keep my batteries that are fully charged here on the green side and the ones that are expired or the ones that are dead uh, on the red side. So it makes it really easy. And then likewise, they have this in here as well, which is like a memory card size. So again, green stitching ready to go. Red stitching, these cards are full and need to be backed up. Uh, additionally, A, it's water resistant, which comes in handy, but you have this quick access area right here so you can get in quickly. And then you also have the ability to lock uh, or to zip up I got a little laptop uh, right in here, which is perfect for my MacBook Air. Air, not error. Oh, sometimes it's both. Anyway, so this is the, the if I'm shooting in Dallas and I'm doing like a product or like a, a client shoot, this is what I usually take with me. Now, my big bag, my travel bag, again, peak design. Uh, I also use them for my straps. I use them for a lot of different things because it's so well engineered. This bag is worth every single penny you will pay for it. Now, you will pay a lot of pennies for this bag. I think it runs $240 US. Uh, I'll put a link to this below, but this is phenomenal. It's worth every single bit. Number one, it is water resistant, and I've tested this in the rains of Bali. Uh, I've tested this in Patagonia, both of those this year where it has gotten poured on, and it kept my thousands of dollars of camera gear safe inside. So. In kind of the same way as the messenger bag, you have a little laptop sleeve in here. You have something that's kind of nice is you have the ability to unvelcro this right here so I can actually put this on my carry-on uh, and just wheel it around. And then you have a couple different ways of opening it. So you have this little locking mechanism here which is a magnetic clasp, but, but then you can, uh, right there, now you can lock it in and you can lift the whole bag up by this magnetic clasp. So it has a really cool locking mechanism in it. Uh, it's really, really secure. And then you have either this top opening feature in here so you can look in, or you have opening it from the side right here. So not only do you have more pockets right here, but you can actually look in and kind of create some shelves for you here. And just like with the messenger bag, you can create your own little shelves and you have your own little separators here. And this is all infinitely customizable, which is why I love this bag and even you, you'll end up finding other uh, uses or other features of this right around the time when you think you need one so one time i wanted to put my drone right here on the front of the backpack well that's when i was just searching around and i found out that they have little straps right here so 
I can put my drone uh, right here and you can connect it with this little strap right here. And then all of a sudden I just put the legs of the drone in here, tighten this up, and all of a sudden I'm good to go. Likewise, I can take my tripod or I can take like my Zuyun crane and I can put it here in this little side pocket and then secure over the tripod and just connect this back here. And so it's, everything is, like I said, it's well thought out. Uh, it's infinitely customizable and it's a good quality. You're, it, it's gonna cost you some money. It really will. Um, I think it's a worthwhile spend of money. The main thing that I tend to not like about camera bags is that it's hard to get a good uh, secure one without people realizing it's a camera bag. So I used to have a low pro one and low pro needs to come up with like a luggage.com or something like that name because it's really obvious to anybody who knows or anybody who would want to steal a camera that low pro is a photography brand. So anyways, enough about my bags. Let's talk about what's in my bag. Now, first off, I mean, I, I know I post about my video gear a lot um, on in the subtitles of my video, but I do want to talk about what I'm using to shoot this video. So I use Mi Photo tripods. Uh, my other one is in my trunk, so I can't show it to you. Uh, I use a Mi Photo Globe Trotter. I have a blue one and a gray one. This is on the blue one. My A7R2 is sitting on my Mi Photo right now. Great video camera. Uh, and I'm using a Sony lapel mic. Uh, I generally like this lapel mic. Um, the only times I've ever, ever really had any problems with it are when I was a moron and didn't uh, put it on the right part of my body. So like one time I put it on a suit lapel and it was facing this way and I got no usable audio. So that was really frustrating. But other than those ID10T errors, uh, idiot errors in other words, it's been a really, really great lavalier mic setup. Again, not cheap, but it works well. Okay, so that said, let's look at my cameras. Why am I not showing you the A7R2? I'm trying to sell my A7R2. I'm gonna keep the following two cameras. Number one, camera one, I have my A6500, Sony A6500, 24 megapixels, but it shoots 4K video and shoots up to 120 frames a second slow motion. Now this is a crop sensor body, uh, which means it's going to, uh, it has certain lenses for it that are a little bit smaller, and it has a crop factor to it to get to like a 35 millimeter equivalent. Now, what lens do I usually keep on this? This is the Sony 12 to 24 G uh, ultra wide zoom lens. Now, the reason I keep this on my 12 to, or on my A6500 is that Sony has a crop factor of 1.5 uh, times on their crop bodies. So 12 millimeters here is about 18 millimeters if I were on my A7R2. Uh, 24 millimeters here is, let's do the math, I hate math, about 35 millimeters on a full frame camera. So it's a good way of getting a 16 to 35 millimeter equivalent on a crop body camera. And this is what I use for most of my vlogging style videos. So I'll shoot like this and I'll just kind of hold on to it and that's why the camera's so shaky sometimes. It, it's really, really nice there. Another reason I like this lens, it's very light, but it also zooms internally. So zooming doesn't cause it to do this, which is kind of nice when you're doing like a vlog or, or space as a concern. Uh, and then sometimes I'll throw this on my A7R2 or my A7R3 uh, to get a super wide shot, but I don't really use that aspect of it that much. I usually keep this on the A6500, okay? So A6500, 12 to 24 Sony. All right, up next, the new hotness. Sony a7R 3 I hope you saw my a7R 3 review video from Singapore. Uh, my apartment in Dallas is not nearly as exciting as Singapore. Apologies about that, but it is kind of good to be back here in the States. So 42 megapixels takes great 4K video, also shoots 120 frames a second slow motion. And for the still photography side of things, this can shoot at 10 frames per second at 42 megapixels, which is pretty amazing. Now, what lens do I have on here? I have the Sony 24 to 70 G Master. So this is a constant aperture of f 2.8, and this is kind of a classic focal length for really all around photography. This lens stays on this camera most of the time. I can shoot landscapes with it. I can shoot somewhat some sports with it uh, because you can always kind of crop in with 42 megapixels. It's been a durable lens so far. I've taken it on four different continents with me, and I've I, don't, I haven't like beaten it up on purpose or anything, but it's just, it's, it's been durable. It's, it, 
it rests really well in the hand. It's very well balanced with the A7R2 and the A7R3, and I really do enjoy it. So I've, I've loved the 24 to 70. It's expensive. This one runs about $2,200 brand new, uh, but it's such a versatile lens that it's, it's enabled me to get rid of other lenses in my kit and just stay with this one. So that's been really, really nice. All right, so we have A7R3 and the A6500. Now let's look at some of these lenses, some of the other lenses that I use. All right, so the first one we're gonna go over is this one, the Sony 90 millimeter F2.8 macro lens. This is one of the sharpest lenses that I've ever used, and it is just the best thing ever. I absolutely adore some of the images that I've gotten with this. It has this nice push-pull switch between autofocus and manual focus. And you have your limit selectors here for how close you want to zoom in. The autofocus is a little bit slower in this one, and that's it's kind of what you get with a macro lens because it has quite a bit to search, uh, or quite a focal range to search, if you will. But it's sharp as a tack, and I love it. I use this a lot when I'm here. When I'm shooting like product images for the blog, um, I, I use this. Uh, but I've also taken it on a flight once. I think I was flying Dallas to Beijing and I took this on a flight to get like some ultra macro pictures of American Airlines food, uh, which was just interesting. Uh, but at the end of the day, it was airline food, so it wasn't the most interesting thing in the world, but that's okay. So I love the 90 millimeter 2.8. Uh, some people use this as a portrait lens. I don't uh, simply because the, the focus is a little too slow for me. But what I have done is this little button right here, this little G button, you can customize this. So if you're really into the eye autofocus or anything on the Sony cameras, you can program this to be your eye autofocus selector, uh, which helps uh, the focus speed of this uh, greatly. It's still usable, but I have better gear in my bag, so I don't need to use this for portraits, although you could. All right, so what is that better gear in my bag? The brick, the Sony 70 to 200 G Master, F 2.8 focal range or aperture range across the entire zoom length. It's internally zooming like the 12 to 24. It's got this monster focus ring so you can really, really nail the focus. And it's, I mean, it's a heavy son of a gun. I mean, you could do curls with this uh, and get a really, really solid workout. So you have your autofocus, manual focus selector. You have your focus limiter. Do you want full focus or do you just want to go to three, from three meters to the end of, end of the world? Um, optical steady shot. And then you have uh, your different modes. And if anybody was curious, Mode one means there's going to be something that's kind of in the shot, and then mode two means you're going to be panning left and right like this as you're getting the shot. So you're just telling the lens how you want it to autofocus. You have a lot of little customizable buttons here. So these are normally used as like a focus hold. So if you want it, if you, your autofocus is good, you want to hold it for a set of shots uh, using the 10 frames per second on the A7R3, for example, you can just hold it there and it's not going to keep hunting, which is nice if you don't do the back button focus thing. I don't bring it, I don't like it. So. All right, what do we have next? So now we're getting into the more specialized part of my kit. And, and I do want to say before I get to this one, actually, I am shooting this with the Zeiss 50 millimeter uh, F1.4 uh, lens for Sony. So Sony, Zeiss, Zeiss, whatever people want to call it, Zony, I guess. Um, it's one of my favorite lenses for video because it has a clickless aperture ring. And it's also a phenomenal lens for portraits. Uh, just like the 24 to 70 is, I get that. But if I know I'm going to get like, I need like full body shots. I don't need to worry about headshots or anything. I will put this uh, camera on my, uh, on my A7R2, my A7R3, because it is so sharp. It is so epic and has just the great micro contrast that you expect from Zeiss. Now, a lot of people will ask, have I tried the, the 55 F1.8 from Sony Zeiss? And yes, I have. Uh, the reason I got the F1.4 instead is that I sold the Zeiss for what I think is a lot of money, uh, and so I had a little bit of money to spare, and I really wanted f1.4 because I do a lot of helicopter photography at night, and I need every bit of uh, light, every bit of aperture, every bit of camera speed that I can get. Um, and this lens handles chromatic aberration a little bit better than the 55 f1.8 does, which is kind of the only, only real knack on the 55 f1.8. So 50 millimeter f1.4, I don't use it as often as I would like to simply because the Sony 24 to 70 G Master is that good. Um, but it's nice to have, especially for helicopter photography, and it's nice to have that two stops of light difference uh, between f2.8 and that f1.4. Okay, so the last lens we're gonna cover today is the Canon, 
That's right. The Canon 24 millimeter tilt shift, second edition. This is my favorite lens um, that I use. It is a joy to shoot with. And if you haven't used tilt shift lenses before, I posted another video on, on the channel and I'll, I'll send that or I'll put that in the link below. This lens just has a certain quality to it. I think this is probably one of the best lenses that Canon has ever made, to be honest. Um, it is crisp, it is sharp, and the images just have a sort of character to them that I can't replicate on any of my Sony lenses. So um, I use this for more architecture photography, food photography, mainly architecture photography. Um, and I don't really use the tilt function as much as I use the shift function. Like most architectural photographers would tell you, the tilt function is good in certain cases, but it's mostly shifting. It just makes it easier in post-production to get all my verticals straight using this. And it's just, it's such a joy to shoot with. If you haven't tried this lens and you're interested at all in tilt shift photography, oh my gosh, Canon TS2, the 24 millimeter is just sublime to shoot with. Even though it's manual focus only, it is still just a joy to shoot with, especially on cameras like the a6500, the a7R3, because they have focus peaking on them. So you can really get into live view and you can really uh, nail the focus with this thing. And when you nail the focus on this thing, there's nothing else like it. Um, okay, so those are the lenses that I use. Now, there's uh, a couple of lenses that I don't use anymore and I'm trying to sell. Uh, those lenses would be the Sony 70 to 200 millimeter f4 lens, which is still a phenomenal. Hold on one second. Okay, sorry about that. As I was saying, I use the Sony 70 to 200, or I do not. I no longer use the Sony 70 to 200 f4 uh, G lens simply because I have the G Master lens, which gives me just a little bit uh, quicker uh, of a lens in terms of aperture and blurring the background. Um, so I use the 70 to 200 G master, not the 70 to 200 G. So I'm trying to sell the 70 to 200 G right now. Another lens that I just do not use very much anymore is the Canon 17 millimeter tilt shift. So what makes a 17 millimeter not as good as a 24 millimeter? I honestly don't know, but usually for me, the 17 millimeter is just too wide. Uh, so if you're interested in any of those lenses, please let me know. Um, and like I said, I'm also trying to sell my a7R II, which makes me kind of emotional because you know, I just did a video recently telling you about how much I love the a7R II. So if you're interested in any of those, let me know. I can get your pricing, give you a good deal for a YouTube subscriber. And then some of the other things I use, uh, I use Godox flashes. Um, Godox works really well with the Sony system. Um, these are the little speed lights they have. Uh, I'm actually lighting myself right now with two strobes that just have the modeling light on. I don't, I'm about to make a big investment into video lights, but for right now, uh, my Godox AD600s are actually lighting me, which is kind of nice. Um, whenever I'm shooting with my speed light, I use the F-Stoppers flash disc. Um, I love these little guys. They're very versatile, give off good quality of light. It makes it really nice uh, when shooting photography at like a club or something like that, which I don't do very much of, but uh, I did a little bit for a charity last year, and I'll probably be doing that again uh, this coming year um, if they'll have me back, which I think they want me back, so that's good. Now, alongside that, I use Peak Design straps, Sony batteries, uh, another piece of kit that I have is this lovely Zuyun Crane 2, which a video is coming very soon of. Let's see, I use Apple products for my computers. Um, I have a MacBook Air, which is on its last legs, and I use Western Digital um, portable hard drives uh, whenever I'm on the road, and for backup on my main computer. So, I am very heavily invested in the Sony system, and I'm gonna keep investing in that Sony ecosystem. I think Sony has a, a great mix of megapixels, image quality, and technology. And the a7R III is a great example of when Sony realized, the Sony does a great job of listening to their customers. So the color science on the a7R III is a little bit better than it is on the a7R II, for example. But the a7R III, they, they cobbled together a lot of uh, features that I think photographers really wanted and videographers really wanted. And so to me, that says that they don't feel the need to just go for it all every single time. They actually had some restraint, uh, which was really cool. Uh, verse, it's similar to, I always make the analogy that A7R 3 is to A7R 2 what the Canon 5D Mark IV is to the 5D Mark III. 
evolution, not revolution. But I think Sony has a really good sense for when to evolve and when to revolutionize the industry. So I'm very happy with my Sony cameras and all of my Sony batteries. Uh, and I think if you're, if you're looking to change, now is a great time because you're seeing a lot of A7R2s come on the used market like mine. Uh, so that is what is in my bag at the end of 2017. If you check back with me next week, it may be completely different because I do kind of swap out lenses fairly often. But that is what we're looking like at the end of 2017. Uh, and so if you have any questions, leave them below for me. Hope you've enjoyed this quick look at all of my gear. Uh, happy holidays to you, whatever version of those holidays you celebrate. Hope you get some good time with the family. Hope Santa or whichever gift giver uh, in your world uh, leaves you some great gifts, some great photography gear. Um, as always, leave questions in the comments below. Hit like, hit subscribe, and until next year, Thank you so much for following along. This is Andy from Andy's Travel Blog. We'll see you next time.